Oh hi everyone! Welcome to 20 tips to help you win a player unknown battlegrounds. So I made a video a few days back about training in player unknown battlegrounds. So today I thought I would share with you my top 20 tips for winning in player unknown battlegrounds. So I've won quite a few games in both solo and squad and I've got the de delicious chicken dinner. Remember this game is all about risk management so that sounds exciting. Let's jump right in. Just a quick note, first 16 so tips are about the strategy I use to win the game and after that I've got some other ways to improve your gaming performance which might actually help you actually in real life too. So okay tip number one. First ask yourself why are you playing this game? Now do you want to win and get the delicious chicken dinner or do you just want to kill a few players and probably end up dead? And this guide is for the people who want the juicy chicken dinners, right? The best teams or players generally choose a starting location on the map but it's got a pretty good opportunity for loot and very few players. Don't always go for the biggest cities Actually, it might be best to avoid the cities altogether. The early game involves a lot of luck, so by going somewhere quiet and getting your equipment quickly really does help. So the third tip, most players dive out of a plane quite early, I would say in the first half of when the plane's flying over. So diving out later may actually mean that there's a bit more loose round and a few less players to fight over it, which is ideal. Now, Skydive quickly, okay, as quickly as you can, but remember if you spend too much time in the air you can become a sitting duck, okay? So it's okay to stay in the plane longer as long as you still dive fairly quickly. You should only ever pull your chute early if you want to go further. Talking of going further, when you have a parachute, hold forward for a second, then release for a second, repeat the process get maximum distance if you've got a parachute. Get equipment early, then pay attention to where the exclusion zone is. Now if you don't know where the exclusion zone is, that's the area that comes in into um, a circle and it gets smaller and smaller forcing players into a tighter play space. If you're a long way away from the exclusion zone, get a vehicle. A boat is perfect because these tend to be a bit safer than other vehicles like motorbikes or cars. Um, and remember, if you do get a motorbike or a car, then this will also make you a sitting duck because the players will be able to not only see you, they'll be able to hear you from a long distance away. So tip number five. Now get to the other side of the exclusion zone, okay? So for example, if the exclusion zone is up here, you really want to be in the top corner, right? The top corner of the exclusion zone. So, you know, you really want to be right this side of it. Now, hopefully this should actually mean that you'll encounter a, a lot less players if you're in that corner, okay? So yeah, try to avoid other players generally. Okay, so now for some reason we're gonna jump to number seven. Remember, you really want to avoid conflict at all costs. This sounds funny for a first person shooter, but you want to win, okay? You don't just want to win one of two fights, you want to win the overall game, right? You should only attack the enemy if you think you can kill them and you don't think anyone else is around. Two, if they attack you, or if you think they might attack you. Or three, if you think that they might have seen you and are running away to start camping you, okay? Now, this might sound strange. You would think, well, why shouldn't I engage in every fight I can get in? Well, if you're a really, really good player, maybe you could try that strategy. But again, this is all about risk management, you know? So if you can avoid the risk and let the player run off, right? I'd do so personally, just for this guide anyway. So now we're going to go to number eight. Okay, let's say that you've got the equipment, plenty of bandages and drinks, and you've uh, driven to somewhere near where you think the exclusion zone will end, okay? So. In other words, you've gone to a point where you think the game's gonna kind of, where the final scene will happen, okay, um, and you're kind of camping there, maybe this isn't a bad idea. 
and let's say that it isn't the end of the game, it's sort of early to mid game and you've still got reasonable equipment. Okay, well, now the best thing you can do is to camp the area, maybe in a building. You could be running around trying to find the best stuff, but there's a good chance you'll be found and killed. Remember, any conflict can result in your death, so these are the best, so these are best avoided for now. Also, someone running sideways will be harder to shoot than someone running towards or away from you, okay? Number 9. Whilst camped in a safe location, stay quiet. Keep listening to the game for footsteps. Learn about the location you're in and start some planning. You should think about what equipment you will need in the end game. Look at the map and think about where you will move to, okay? Okay, sorry, if you followed all of these steps, you should be within the top, say, eight players, for example. Okay, so what equipment do you need for the final game? Okay, some kind of machine gun, obviously, um, preferably with a sight because you might need range. Um, grenades come in incredibly useful, you know, you can throw them into houses and things. Um, generally speaking, the best possible equipment you can get. Some healing stuff, but remember, you're not going to have loads of time to heal at the end of a game, and you ideally want to go into um, the final part of the game pretty much at full health or as high as possible. So, okay, we're going to move on to number 10. Whilst camped, remember the attacker has the advantage. So maybe plan out attacking them. You have an advantage in home territory because you already have seen the building. So make plans to avoid being ambushed, okay? So just to reiterate, the attacker has the advantage. So it's really your job to either be the attacker or to plan on how you would um, kill someone if they came in, for example. Number 11, Endgame. Now, instead of trying to kill 100 players, or more realistically, say, 20 players or 15, you may have only killed, there may only be five players left, and they will want to also kill each other. So it's very hard to give tips here, but the people who move first tend to die. The best players can guess where the enemy is hiding, so the game at the end becomes a bit like battleships. You can also shoot, but remember, as soon as you shoot, you'll give away your location, so wait for other players to shoot first. One will win the conflict, both will probably take damage, okay? So, ideally, you want to be the person who acts last, okay? But bear in mind, attackers have the advantage over defenders, so that's another thing to take into account. If the enemy is in a small building, grenade through the window may flush them out, but remember, take cover, they can still shoot you whilst you throw the grenade. You should be more aggressive at the end, but not reckless. The person who acts first is probably the person who's going to die, especially if there's multiple players left at the end. Okay, let's say the other enemies kill each other, and there are only two players left, so apart from yourself, so there'd be three in total. Ideally, the other two would attack each other. In that situation, try and pick a winner and as soon as it's one versus one, and kill time, do everything you can to kill the last player and to get the chicken dinner, okay? Now, use training mode. Oh, sorry, this is tip number 15. Use training mode and practice using different guns against different players. Use training mode before um, a game um, so you can actually get warmed up and help... Sorry. Hey, please. The number 15. Use training mode and practice using different guns against different players. Using training mode before a game can help your hands get warmed up and can actually help you win battles. It might also be worth getting longer range sights and practicing sniping because you never know, you might get a really long range um, sight and you know it's kind of quite good if you can actually use it pretty effectively, I think. So yeah, the training is absolutely perfect for that sort of thing. Now we're on number 17. Okay, I will go over a few other tips now. One good tip is if your avatar in the game has a drink to heal, you could actually do the same. Caffeine, when drunk in moderation, can boost alertness and boost adrenaline. Yeah, did you know that caffeine can boost your adrenaline, which can help in high pressure situations. Ground coffee is really the king here for me personally. This step is totally optional, 
and use it use your own common sense. Also, maybe too much caffeine could harm your performance. Also, getting a good night's sleep and eating a healthy diet. A healthy diet rich in omega-3 fatty acids may help your may help your performance. Giving having a food like smoked salmon as a snack is a great idea. You could also try intermittent fasting, possibly. It's been shown to increase brain power, um, and it's been shown to increase the plasticity of your brain, which may help you learn faster and make quicker decisions. Of course, talk to your doctor before any dietary changes, yada yada yada. Now, it's important to stay physically fit. When you play a difficult game, your body enters a state called flow. This is a high blood pressure, high concentration state, but it's also a lot of fun. Caffeine, in moderation, can help you get there. Staying fit will also boost your ability to stay in the flow state. A champion chess player can also maintain the flow state for hours, giving them maximum performance. So tip number 19. So you're using the motor cortex of your brain to control the avatar. So staying fit, practicing your balance, strength training, and strengthening your heart with cardio will all help your gaming performance. Competitive gaming actually has a lot of similarities with other sports physiologically. You may not be running around, but your mind on some level is doing something similar. Now the last tip number 20 is meditation. According to Psychology Today, people who meditate can actually have a better mental focus. A study by Italian neuroscientists, I'm not even going to try to say his name, oh go on. Giuseppe Pagnoni found that meditation not only changes brain patterns, but it also confers advantages in mental focus that may improve cognitive performance. Meditation really can improve performance in many ways. I have another video coming up with more details about meditation. Thank you very much for watching and I really hope that you found some of these tips useful. Hey guys, just wanted to give you a massive thank you for watching. If you like the video, please subscribe. Um, give this a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. It's up to you entirely. But uh, yeah, please uh, let me know in the comments what you thought. And thank you very much for watching.